Hello, I'm Dr. Flanagan Fiffle, and thank you for watching this, the fourth entry in the award-winning This A Moral Life series of educational films designed to help steer you through a scary and alienating world. Our previous entries have dealt with such vital topics as blackmail and its fringe benefits, how to avoid the cops, and teenage pregnancy, and how to make it go away. <laughs> Tonight's topic, however, is perhaps the most important of all. Follow me. Go long. <laughs> All right, <laughs> now let's get down to business. As a productive member of our society, sometimes hard work, it just won't cut it. Am I right, Jimmy Joe? Hard work makes you grow up big and strong and- <laughs> Oh, no, Jimmy, you're wrong. Hard work won't get you everything, and I'll be the first to admit that it can get a little frustrating. That's where our good friend marijuana comes in. Do you know about marijuana? I heard that it could kill you. I heard that marijuana can contribute to an economy and yield profitable returns to the proprietor. That's right, Jimmy John John. Marijuana can be a welcome addition to one's state of mind. Not only does it enhance the appetite, but it destroys flesh-eating bacteria. Oh, I want some, Dr. Fiffle. I want some. Gimme! Whoa, Jimmy. We're talking about marijuana, not crack. Where can I get some, Dr. Fiffle? Ah, well, unfortunately, that process can be a little bit trying, Jim James. But this is precisely the topic of today's video. This Amoral Life 4 Know Your Dealer Behold the Marijuana Proprietor also known as Chiba Slinger, Hooker Upper, Dude Bra, Mr. Tambourine Man, Dr. Robert, Pusher Puller, and of course, the Boom Boom Snuffy Cat. In order to effectively spot and determine a good dealer from a bad dealer, one must follow a list of simple rules. The High Five. Don't worry, judging a book by its cover is okay. Notice the immediate aesthetic differences as they are the first line of defense against a bad dealer. The good dealer will have a million dollar smile and firm handshake. His clothing will not be second hand, nor will it have any stains. The good dealer will not resemble the stereotypical drug pusher. Before you even see the bad dealer, you will smell him. He will often have some sort of heathen musk that hypnotizes the buyer, so tread carefully. The good dealer would qualify as a high roller. Someone respectable, someone dependable, best described as a player for real. He will always provide a little bit more of the latest fad, the uh, coolest bud, the creepiest reefer, just to keep his valued client happy. Yeah, you like that, don't you, Justin? The good dealer will have an organized and diverse selection, and oftentimes, a secretary or two. And they won't be bad on the eyes, either. <laughs> the bad dealer will not have a secretary, but rather one, two, or even three young women. These women are referred to as the dealer's bitches, or hoes, or on occasion, baby mamas. Do you see the difference, Jorgensen? I think so. It's all right to make rash judgments based on appearance, if you're involving yourself in something illegal. <laughs> Wouldn't want things to turn sour. Know your role. The good dealer will know exactly when to end the visit. He understands that this is a business transaction. You are not there to be his friend. Unlike the bad dealer, the bad dealer will make no secret of his unacceptable personal hygiene or his repressed homosexual urges. He will regularly cross the lines of acceptable social intercourse and play the guilt card when you try to leave in a timely manner. <laughs> As if that couldn't get any more awkward, the bad dealer may ask for a ride into town or invite you to his homie's musical performance. 
it is absolutely imperative that you not accept either invitation. This is why a short list of handy excuses are recommended. Such excuses as, Sorry man, I'm super late for work. Or, I'll be out of town. Or, Cars all full with crap for the dump. A user is a loser. The bad dealer will ask the buyer to throw in or load a bowl with the product he has just provided. Then, he will hoard it unapologetically. This ignorance is the result of years of drug abuse and would not be tolerated in normal factions of society. This is precisely the good dealer's strength. The good dealer is a businessman above all else. He will not partake, but he will provide a nice, quiet, judgment-free place to do so. The good dealer will keep a clear head during business operations. No drugs for him. Learn the lingo. Now this step can be tricky. You have no way of knowing the exact preference of the dealer, so it's better to learn everything. After all, better safe than sorry. The good dealer will furnish you with a safe telephone number. You see, since he's got his shit together, there's no reason for suspicion. This is a direct line to him and only him. It may behoove you to text him first, so not to come off as pushy. This is a great icebreaker, to the point and simple. The good dealer will know exactly what you mean. It's as simple as that. It's really that easy? Sure, Johnny, if you know what to look for. The bad dealer will not have a phone number because he's paranoid. He will instead resort to some feudal system, such as an ever-changing password. Now you're in dangerous territory. The bad dealer will overanalyze everything you do. He's looking for cops, you see. He's always looking for cops. The slightest gesture or lack of appropriate lingo can spark trouble. Observe. Uh-oh, Jacoby. Unfortunately, sometimes even the paranoid are actually being followed. Ouch! Ooh, that looks like it hurt. And it's time to face the music. And now, a disclaimer. Our depictions of the drug trade are representations based on collected data. They don't necessarily predict the exact interaction you will have with a dealer. On several occasions in history, the good dealer has been revealed, in fact, to be the bad dealer. Well, this is the way of the world. With this in mind, I'd like to present you with our final rule to knowing your dealer. Get a medical marijuana card. Get a medical marijuana card. Then you won't have to worry about it. Good night. Are we cut?